Hey there, guys. Uh, so someone pointed out to me that they wanted to use data layers with landscapes, and I did not go over that in any of my videos. So this is a question I actually have seen quite a bit previously, and I just didn't think about doing it for the series. But there is actually a way to use data layers and landscapes. So what we can do, um, it's very similar actually to like normal data layers, but there is a slight difference. So I just made this landscape through the normal method, just landscape, added it in real quick. Um, we can go ahead and what we can do is first you go uh, our new landscape actors uh, uh, the streaming behavior for this instead of is spatially loaded it uses this and then under all the landscape streaming proxies it just does is spatially loaded so if you want to use it you don't necessarily have to get rid of this, um, but you can. You can also use the runtime grids with the streaming proxies, um, which works fairly well. But if you want specific parts of a landscape to load at once, it's not as precise since it uses like a giant circle, basically. I'm just going to unselect that. All right. So next what we're going to do is we need to create a data layer. So I'm going to go to miscellaneous data layer. I'm just going to name this landscape if I do it right. So landscape. Open it up. I'm going to set this to runtime and then save. I'm going to close both of these. And then in the data layers, I'm going to pull this down, move landscape in here, so currently loaded, go to landscape. You can do the whole landscape, or you can do all of the streaming proxies. If you're going to be using data layers, um, the best way to do it might be similar to how I did it with the building. So. You could use one large landscape potentially and then separate the streaming proxies into different layers. But if you want to use the whole landscape, you just click it, go to data layers. And then if you click it and right click, you'll notice that you cannot add the selected actors like normal. But in this top right section up here, there is a button that says add selected actors to data layers. And there's another one that says remove. So if you click this, it didn't really seem to do anything. But if you do it with the proxies, add, remove, it does. So with the way the landscape proxies work, you can basically think of them like this is almost a controller for the landscape. And then these are the actual static meshes almost. So the streaming proxies are actually what control what the person, what the players see. And then the landscape, it it does but for data layers it, it works differently um you could potentially just keep the landscape and only have the landscape proxies inside data layers so oh, i already forgot so like that and then if you undo this it disappears but the landscape is still technically loaded just not these so it's kind of interesting. It's a little bit of a different setup for landscapes and how the data layers and stuff work. But otherwise, um, you can still use them with these collisions. So 
if I go in here, so this is BP actor loading too. This. Give it a second. So we've got our in one and in two. Okay. Okay. So if you click on the BP Actor Loader 2, we've got our in data layer 1 and 2. So let's do landscape. So which one is this? Doesn't matter. I'm just gonna leave it. Uh and then let's go back to data layers. I didn't really set up my windows for this. Uh let's see. Do we want it to be unloaded? Okay. So that looks good. Gonna start play right here. Okay. So we've got no landscape. And then if I walk over into this, there we go. Landscape just showed up. Back out. So if I stay right here. You can see the whole landscape loaded in. So that's pretty much all there is to it. Um, it's a little bit different, but it's uh, it's not too complicated. Um, otherwise, it, it works basically the same as any other actor. So hopefully that'll uh, that'll help some people out there. Um, all right. Well, hope you guys have a good day. Thank you for watching and. See you next time.